All right, so let's talk about the best trading computer. So back in the days, you really needed a big, super powerful machine, a desktop. But is this still, still the case? Do you need a desktop? Do you need a laptop? If you do, how powerful does it need to be? How much money do you need to spend on trading computers? Is it really two or $3,000? Or can you get away with a much cheaper model or maybe even an iPad? And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about right now. So Mark, back a few years ago, you often had to download software onto your computer if you think about maybe Trade Navigator, Trade Station, Think or Swim, I mean, all of the software you had to download it on the computer and then you needed a lot of processing power, especially if you had some scanners or filters set up, right? Or even maybe trading strategies. Exactly. And I would say up until about two years ago, I had a dedicated desktop that was just running 24 seven that was really powerful to power the monitors that I wanted to use and uh, just to, to have a you know faster speed and hard drive but things have really changed. Absolutely. So these days uh, you can really get away with a fairly cheap laptop. We'll, we'll take a look at a few models here in just a moment, but uh, let me just switch to the other camera and show you what both Mark and I are using. So there you are. <laughs> okay, you get the idea. So what do you see here right now? This is a MacBook Pro. It's a 2015, I believe. Uh, I'm waiting for the Apple event uh, that is going to happen next week where they announce the new one with the M1 chip. And the only reason why I want to have such a powerful machine is because, as you can see, I'm doing all the video production there. This right now that you see on the screen is Ecamm Live. This is the software that I'm running. I'm not using this for trading. Honestly, for trading, probably a MacBook Air would be absolutely sufficient or one of the older models if you want to choose a MacBook. I think these days, Mark, the, the most important criteria is RAM. Yes. Right? The, the more RAM you have, the better. I mean, you should have a minimum of eight gigabit of RAM. 16 is better. 32, it's almost overkill. Do you know how much you have in your machine? I think that I have 16. I, I bought more that I just haven't uh, put in there. Um, but eight is light. 16 is, is good because you're, you're going to be using multiple applications, right? And even uh, like, you know, having multiple windows open, that's using a lot of uh, memory. And, you know, if you have your, your trading platform open, you know, charting software of, of some sort, maybe Zoom, if you're you know right. joining like as a mastermind member watching us together, that's where RAM really helps. Yeah. And the other thing that is super important is the graphics card. So have the best graphics card possible. If you can, a so-called dedicated graphics card, in my experience, good RAM and a good graphics card is more important than processing power these days. These days. The reason why you want to have a really great graphics card is because it makes sense to connect multiple monitors. And uh, let's go back to, to our setup here. Uh, so you see that Mark actually has an external monitor. In fact, you usually travel with two yeah. external monitors. And, you know, for traveling, I think these are awesome uh, Asus. Yep. Uh, they're super light. They connect with a USB cable, so it's powered with USB. You don't have to have all sorts of wires. And uh, for me, having an extra two monitors, at least one, uh, really helps. My office at home is a little more crazy. Uh, big 47-inch widescreen curved uh, Samsung monitor, and then I have a couple of 27-inch Dells above, and then the laptop. So at home, it gets a little crazy, but having two of these is just awesome if you're on the road and yeah. they can work from the office too like if you exactly to. for me since i travel a lot i have uh, one of these actually i had to recently replace it and uh, they were out of stock so i have a slightly different model right now but these are my two many monitors so i usually have uh, right here my macbook pro and then i have the the asus right next to me and this is the same setup that i'm using uh, wherever i am wherever i'm traveling because i i like to be on the road a lot. Yeah. One one small thing, because if yeah, you go out and you buy one of those, get a good stand. That's the one thing that I've found that a lot of these uh, these portable monitor companies, they don't have the best stand. And this guy is awesome. I guess we could put a link in the... Yeah, we'll put a link in the description this, to the monitor and also to this thing. makes it so much so, easier. Uh, as soon as we're done with the live show here. So let's talk about uh, the philosophical, uh, philosophical question. Mac or PC? And I'll be honest, this is where my thoughts have really changed. 10 years ago, everything trading wise was built for a PC. So you really had to go out of your way to get things set up and to be able to use a Mac and it was inconvenient. So your, your charting software, nobody had things set up for a, uh, a Mac and also very few applications actually had the same level of uh, 
of support or sophistication with their online platform as they did an exe file that you download and and run from your computer now a lot of things are web-based which makes it more convenient and that's where i'm i'm tempted to make the switch here so this is where right now we're seeing another shift happening i mean at first it was really windows 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 then it didn't matter as much because the applications were running equally well on windows and pc but now there's the shift to just browser-based exactly. technology. So now you can even consider of possibly just trading off an iPad. In fact, this is what you see me using for these shows here. Uh, so I'm using this iPad here. I have trading view open and you see I can mark on it. As you can see, I also have then uh, the PowerX optimizer since this is web-based, have it here as well. So I'm using this and the only reason why right now I am still using a computer for trading is because I currently, in addition to the Tradier accounts, also have a Tastyworks account. Now, yes, I know Tastyworks has an app and I'm not the biggest fan of the app. I, I feel that uh, the, the brokerage apps are not as good as they could be. Yeah, and honestly, I like having a little more real estate when I'm putting on trades. So I know some people swear by the apps, they love them, uh, but me, fat fingering in order, <laughs> big hands, and you know, uh, I, I don't know. I, I like to be able to see everything. So I, I prefer uh, at least, you know, having a, a tablet or uh, a, a notebook, yeah. uh, laptop instead. Now, once I've moved my, account, my accounts over from Tastyworks to Tradier, then I can use only uh, the notepad, uh, the, the iPad. So for me, the iPad, just to show you, it's uh, one of these uh, 11 and a half inches, I believe, or 11.9 inches. So it's, it's the bigger one. And uh, again, for me, it's easier to see it this way. In terms of screen size for a laptop, I mean, we're pretty much the same. We both use a 15 inch. So we're not going crazy here because usually the larger the screen for your laptop, the heavier, heavier. the laptop. I mean, one of our mastermind members here uh, showed us, uh, what was it, an LG? Yeah. Super light, 17 inches and super light. So it seems that it's not as heavy as it used to be. But I would rather say, you know what, get a 15 inch and then uh, have one of these, which is yeah. also 15 inch. So therefore you have pretty much two screens, same size. Yeah, I had a 17 inch uh, before and it was bulky. And, and again, for me, it's, it, it's I have the 15.7 or whatever it is. And a, a couple of these uh, have plenty of screen space. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about if you really want to buy a trading computer. So what 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 trading computer should you buy? So what is a, a reasonable laptop? Shall we just go to Best Buy? Sure. So let's go to bestbuy.com. The reason why I, I think it makes sense to, to go to Best Buy is at Best Buy, you see the laptop. I personally would not buy a laptop sight unseen from Amazon or Newegg or, or any of these websites. I, I would really like to see, and I highly recommend, I mean, log into the application that you're using the most. You want to see the, the screen resolution because surprisingly, the screen resolutions have a huge difference. Even though you have a 15 inch and a 15 inch, it seems that every graphics card and screen is optimized for a different resolution. And you want to make sure that you're comfortable using the so-called native screen resolution and not mess around with enlarging it or making it bigger or making it smaller. You will get the best quality if you're using the native screen resolution. Absolutely. So it's always good to, to you know, see how heavy it is, get that, that uh, look at it and make sure that it's something that you want to invest in. Uh, I know that you're pulling up things. Just as a, a real nice shortcut, search for a gaming computer. A gaming computer will give you plenty of uh, power that you need, but as we mentioned earlier, the RAM right now is, is key because a lot of the applications that you're gonna use for trading, they're actually, they're not upgrading things every single day, <laughs> and so they're a couple of years behind anyway. Yeah. So let, let's just take a look here at a, at a few laptops and really dive deep and uh, look uh, or tell everybody what we are looking for. Uh, so the first thing, if I can, uh, I will go for RAM of uh, 16 gigabytes. I, I think this makes the most sense if you have 16 gigabyte of RAM. And you already see, if, if I'm actually uh, going back from 16 to 8 gigabytes, so right now uh, you see a few computers here popping up uh, with 8 gigabytes, and you see they are running around 500 to $600. So scrolling up here, so there's an HP for 580, there's one for 540. 
However, as soon as you move higher to 16 gigabyte, uh, so let me do that. Uh, can I sort this here? Should be able to. There we go. Uh, they are quickly jumping up to a thousand dollars. So here we have, uh, for example, a Dell that's being featured for a thousand dollars. So this is 16 gigabyte, 512 uh, gigabyte solid state. So this is the, the RAM. What do you think about uh, the the hard, hard drive? drive? What do you think about hard drive? Is hard drive uh, size important? Uh, not so much these days, um, just because so much is web-based and cloud-based. So not like it was before. I think 512 is great. I think even on, on my machine, I have 256 uh, yeah. solid state. So the SSD drive, I, I don't even know if, you know, SSD is probably the, the norm. When I got this, I think it was two years ago, uh, it was about a thousand bucks and um, the SSD was optional. Right. So SSD stands for solid state drive. And basically means that you don't have any moving parts. It's like a huge, big memory card. So this makes it uh, less yeah, prone to failure. Uh, so it, it's just a little bit more a little stable, faster, a little, little bit quieter, faster. Not as hot. Yeah, but I, I think these days it's state of the art that you have SSD. If not, you should do it. So the only reason why you needed a large hard drive in the past is because often you had to download data. Depending on what software you used, you had to download the data. And over time, this build up, especially- or programs. Or programs, yeah. yeah. So these days it doesn't matter. I have 512 gig, you have 256. I, I think you could always is... plug in an external hard drive that which is cheap too. Well, plus there's Dropbox, there's Google Drive, and I mean everything is cloud based. And uh, usually, what takes the most space on your computer are your pictures and videos that you take on your phone. So you might as well back these up to the cloud because this is where they live forever. We are just talking about a trading computer right now, so I think. 512 will be plenty. Okay, uh, let's see if we find uh, some more information on this computer because here what I'm looking for is really the dedicated graphics card. And if you don't know what to look for, really walk into a Best Buy, talk to an associate and say, I would like to have a computer with a dedicated graphics card. Let's see if it is easy to find. Otherwise, we will not uh, waste too much time on there. So there's an, uh, an Iris uh, X. Uh, okay, so this here is interesting. This is where it goes back to uh, your comment regarding gaming computers. Uh, so I just want to scroll down and you see here you see the graphics card and you get an idea budget friendly entry level runs games at low to mid range. So th that gives you an indication that this is probably not the fastest graphics card that is out there. So depending on how you look for a computer definitely would look to for mid range. I don't know if you need a uh, high end enough for trading, not, not for, for trading. trading. Yeah. But I, I definitely would look for a mid-range Mid. graphic card. So as you can see, I'm not paying attention at all to the processor because honestly, most of the computing these days is done on the servers. If, if you use, for example, the PowerX optimizer, we are doing everything on our servers and just displaying you the data. And this is true pretty much for all applications. Just if you're using Google Chrome, you definitely need a lot of RAM. But I'm not paying attention to the uh, to this uh, yeah crazy... Uh, processors, whether it is, uh, I don't know, an 11th generation, let me just bring it up here, core seven or core nine or quad core or dual core, all of this kind of stuff. For, for trading, it doesn't seem to be an issue uh, with all of these mathematical complications because for trading, it's now basic complications or math these days, you know? <laughs> exactly. All right, uh, looking, at, looking at our setup here, what, what else uh, should we talk about? I think that is pretty much it. It's uh, fairly easy. It's, it's not that complicated. You have a more sophisticated setup at home with multiple monitors. And for me, it's really this and uh, the second monitor that I've usually there. Right now, it's standing over there on the table. Yeah, so that that's uh, pretty much it. Okay, well, I hope it helps to decide uh, for you to decide what trading computer to buy when you want to new, have a new trading computer in 2021. And it really depends on what applications you use. If you're completely web-based, you can consider just trading on an iPad, possibly. If you still use some applications that you download to your computer, don't go crazy. I think a computer for around $1,000 or $1,200 will do just fine. I mean, they got a little bit more expensive with the ship shortage and uh, all this uh, supply chain issues. Uh, but you should go overboard. Rather spend some more mon uh, money on an extra monitor. Now, one quick thing. I know you were just wrapping it up, but would you uh, do a, a touch screen? Is that important to you? No. Yeah. No, it's uh, not. I'll be honest. Um, I have, uh, I can't remember the brand. Best Buy uh, loves them. But um, I have a touch screen 
And honestly, I thought I'd use it more. And for trading, not at all. So I don't think that's as important unless you're going to use it more as a tablet too. Yeah, on a tablet, it's important. But every tablet, obviously, is a touch screen. But for monitors, never use the touch screen. And I'm okay with that. All right. Hey, uh, if you enjoyed this video, we have a few more videos popping up here. Uh, take a look at this. Click on like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.